In this video, I'm going to share with you three ways that you can tune out your inner critic and access your higher self instead. This not only allows you to powerfully move forward in business, but you can also use this in every area of life so that you're feeling fulfilled holistically. I'm Kayla. I am the co-founder of Rise Leadership Circle, where our mission is to expand you into new levels of owning your personal power, value, and worth so that you can live a rich and prosperous life with a business that comes along for the ride. So let's get into it, talking about three ways to tune out your inner critic and instead access your higher self. So the first way is to start your day by focusing and nourishing on your higher self. This is kind of putting the cart before the horse. It is starting with our higher self instead of trying to come from a deficit of seeing that our inner critic has already taken center stage. It's giving our higher self the microphone and the spotlight right away from go. And when we do this, what happens is that rather than trying to recover from already feeling taken out by our inner critic, we start feeling nourished and fulfilled and letting our higher self know that we're really listening to what it has to say. There's a parable that you might've heard about a grandfather sharing with his grandson the story of two wolves. And to shorten the story, the grandson says, well, which wolf wins? And the grandfather says, whichever wolf you feed. And the same is true here. If we are feeding our inner critic by giving it lots of attention, letting it know that it's center stage all of the time, it's going to consistently take up more space. But if we start our day and then carry on with the momentum of already having our higher self be the one that is front and center, we can really get further faster because we're not trying to overcompensate from being taken out by the inner critic. And this is something that we do every day. I want to invite you to think about how can you nourish your higher self instead of your inner critic from go. Let's start with as early as the self-talk, the moment that you're waking up, when your alarm goes off or the first time that your eyes start to open, what are the first thoughts that you hear yourself saying? Is it your inner critic chiming in and saying, you better get up, you're gonna get late. Is it your inner critic saying things like, you didn't get good sleep, you're gonna be tired all day. Is it your inner critic already being in fear or anxiety about today, about scarcity, about how you're not enough? Or is it your higher self inviting you into a space of abundance and opportunity and possibility? So whether you are someone that jumps up with your alarm clock right away in the morning or likes a leisurely morning, we can use either to really let ourselves start nourishing our higher self right away from go. And I just want to speak into that. One of my good friends, she says that the most important thing that we can do is never hit snooze. That when our alarm clock goes off, we jump up and start the day right away. Now that might totally work for her. Me personally, I don't use an alarm clock at all. I like to instead al allow myself to go to bed early enough that I know that my body can get as much sleep as it wants and I still can have a really spacious morning. And so when I start to wake up in the day, I have time, I have space that I can get up right away if I want. I can lay in bed and meditate. I can fall back asleep. And in those very first moments of early thoughts, and this doesn't matter if your alarm clock goes off and your feet hit the floor and you're already running, or if you're more like me and you have a lot of space in your morning, it doesn't matter. But either way, what are the first thoughts that you're thinking the moment that you start to wake up? Notice if you are feeding your higher self by letting that be the voice that you listen to from go, or if you are listening to your inner critic early in the morning. So it's right away when you get out of bed. And then the first thoughts that you have in the first couple moments of the day, those first few minutes of the day, where does your mind go? Are you already starting into a space of anxiety and racing into all of what's on your schedule, into what didn't happen yesterday, into the scarcity, into the laundry list of things to do, into the worry? Or are you taking some time to connect with you, your higher self, your higher power, and having space to be open to any information that you might receive? 
Are you setting an intention for the day? The best way to listen to our higher self instead of our inner critic is to give space for our higher self to speak to us, not only right away in the morning, but all throughout the day. And then what are the first actions that you're taking? Do you immediately jump into work actions, like responding to emails, answering your phone, checking out the news, or do you take an action that honors your higher self? Probably what your higher self looking for is some form of nourishment. And that may be physical nourishment with food or moving your body in some way or taking a shower. It might be emotional nourishment by having space to journal and process any dreams that came up through the night or anything that's coming ahead of the day. It might be spiritual nourishment by taking time to pray or meditate or be in some kind of practice that allows yourself to really just tune into who you are and how you're feeling about the day. So if we want to tune out our inner critic, one of the ways that we can do that is by nourishing and making space for our higher self to take center stage. And check in if you're feeding into a lot of scarcity or not enoughness, or if you are thinking about all of the ways that you really can let yourself be in a space of abundance for what is here present for you in the now moment. Are you starting your day in abundance? This is something that is a total game changer. The inner critic doesn't know what to do with abundance. And so when we start our morning tapping into the possibilities that are here for us, when we start our day tapping into the joy of waking up, connecting with all of the ways that we can live out our purpose, we just naturally turn down the inner critic because it knows that it, it doesn't play in the world of abundance. And so it just naturally moves itself to, to the back seat. Our inner critic is loud if it knows that it has the mic. And so if we don't want our inner critic to be loud, one thing that we can do is give our higher self the microphone. Put the spotlight on our higher self, give it the microphone, and let our higher self know that it really is in the driver's seat. I'm gonna talk more about that in point number two. I do have a free resource for you that I think will be supportive for you in this. I have three phone backgrounds that I absolutely love. They're called inner wisdom wallpapers that I'm going to gift you access to for free that you can put on the back of your phone, choose one that speaks to you and rotate them out every couple of days or weeks when you start to forget to really tune in. So every couple days or weeks, when you realize that you're not quite paying attention to what's on your wallpaper, that's the time when you know that you wanna go ahead and change it up. And what this does is it creates a support structure that every time you pick up your phone and you look at it, you are having your higher self respond to whatever you're gonna see next. So whatever messages you see, what, whatever time it is that you see, whatever emails or social media that you read, when you have a phone wallpaper that is reminding you to tap into your inner wisdom and your higher self, it acts as a support structure so that you can be nourishing and choosing to come from your higher self rather than your inner critic. So you can go ahead into the link and grab that free resource. Go ahead, download those and put those on your phone and use that as a support structure for yourself. Okay, so let's talk about the second way that you can tune out your inner critic and instead access your higher self. It's by acknowledge what your inner critic is saying without accommodating it. I have a really fun analogy for you. So imagine that your inner critic is like a child in the backseat of a car that is asking for directions, worrying if we miss the turn, wondering how much longer till we get there, asking us to explain what's happening with our driving, but only the child doesn't know how to read a map or, or a GPS, doesn't know how to drive the car, doesn't know where we are because this is uncharted territory, a place that we've never been to yet. And a higher self is the adult that's driving the car. So this is really what happens. It's like, our inner critic is the child in the back seat that's saying things like, whoa, didn't we miss our turn? Or aren't we supposed to press that button on the steering wheel now? Or do we need to press faster on the brake? And we're the higher self up front that can lightly chuckle to ourselves and say, thank you so much for reminding me, or thank you for asking that. So we can acknowledge to our inner critic, got it, heard you, thanks so much, but we do not need to accommodate it. If we were the adult driving the car, we wouldn't pull over and try to teach a child that's maybe just learning to talk how to drive a car. Instead, we would just acknowledge the child. We would say, oh, got it, thank you. 
thanks for asking that, or I love how attentive you're being. And we would continue to stay in the driver's seat. This is what we wanna do with our higher self. So the higher self can say, oh, inner critic, hi, thanks for tuning in. Got it, hear you. And we can continue to remember that as the higher self, we know where we're headed. We know how to drive the car and we know where we are going. So by acknowledging the inner critic, not just shoving it down or trying to have it be quiet behind the scenes, if we just try to shove the inner critic down, it's just gonna get louder. Think about the child in the back seat. If if we pretend like we can't hear it, it's just gonna get louder and louder until there's a tantrum, until it's like, stop, I need to say something, right? A child will continue to get louder until it knows that it's being acknowledged. And our inner critic is no different. So we can acknowledge it, but we don't have to accommodate for it. We do not have to pull over our life or our business or our goals to try and slow down and explain things to the inner critic that are simply outside of our inner critic scope. We do not have to accommodate our inner critic. When we acknowledge inner critic, got it, thank you for sharing, we can create a neutral space. And in that space of neutrality, then we can take a powerful action, keeping our higher self in the driver's seat. And the third way that we can tune out our inner critic and instead access our higher self is by reminding ourselves that everything only has the meaning that we give it and then play with other meanings that would be more empowering. So this really is how the world works. Things only have the meaning that we give them. Let's say that it's raining on our wedding day. What does that mean? It means whatever we make it mean. Some people say that means that it's good luck. Some people say that it means nothing at all. Some people say it means that there was heavy clouds in the sky with lots of precipitation. So things only have the meaning that we give them. Our inner critic tends to give meanings that come from a place of scarcity or lack or not enoughness or having us feel like we better hurry up and get back to how things were before because it doesn't want any change. But our higher self can play with the possibility of a variety of meanings. And so when we've noticed that we've been listening to our inner critic, that we've put our inner critic on loudspeaker, something that we can do is play with what other meanings are possible here. And I would invite you to either do a rapid fire round of how many different meanings can we make, or try to think of at least three different meanings. So let's just use an example that might happen for you. Let's say that somebody cancels a meeting with you today. Maybe right away your inner critic is jumping in with a meaning like, see, you're not gonna be good enough to be able to build this business. No one's gonna wanna work with you. You don't have the skills or qualifications and people are always gonna cancel their meetings. That's what the inner critic might jump in and say. And then the higher self can come in and say, that's one possible meaning. Here's some other ones. It also could mean that you were meant to have more space in your schedule for something else. It also could mean that we're opening up space for a soulmate client, not that person. It also could mean that this is a chance for you to take advantage of this time for yourself so that you can reschedule this meeting with the same person and come into it feeling fully resourced and nourished. We get to choose which meaning that we keep. So when you notice that your inner critic is really starting to ramp up, remind yourself that that's only one possible meaning and that we really get to choose which meaning we want to give our energy and attention to. And the more meanings that you can come up with, the more impossibility that you are. So I'd love for you to think about right now, what's one possibility or one meaning that your inner critic is providing? And then go ahead and practice, play with having your higher self make some other meanings that you could choose. What are other possible meanings that your higher self can bring forward and let yourself play in these. So to recap, we have looked at three ways to tune out your inner critic and access your higher self instead. The first is to start by nourishing your higher self. Start every day and then continue throughout the day to nourish your higher self. The second is to acknowledge what your inner critic is offering without needing to accommodate for it. And the third is to remind yourself that everything only has the meaning that we give it and we can play in possibility of other meanings and choose the one that is most empowering. If this work is supporting you, then I would love to invite you to explore and join us in our coaching community for soulful entrepreneurs and leaders who are committed to living a rich life 
by owning their desires with a business that comes along for the ride. In this community, through our coaching, you will be led to connect with your personal power, deepen into leadership with yourself and others, expand into every area of life, trust your intuition, empower your relationship with money and creating wealth, reset your patterns and habits around abundance, experience how money always follows joy, find ways to be deeply supported both in life and business, set accountability structures to follow through on your commitments, engage in soulful practices to elevate your business and your life, create clarity around your desires and the steps to bring them to life, take bold actions and see big results, create harmony in your relationships, align with your highest self to make empowered decisions, honor all of your emotions and use them as a roadmap to expansion and be the fullness of who you are. So if you are a soulful heart centered entrepreneur who wants to build on your terms, click the link below or head to riseleadershipcircle.com to join us. Women from all industries are in our ranks and you are welcome to join us as well. And P.S. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with your friends, like, and subscribe so that you don't miss anything else that we have coming up. See you next time.